My name is Scott Dysart. I'm with SIL serving in Thailand with the, at the Linguistic Institute. Today, we're going to take a look at Shotcut. Uh, Shotcut is a video editing tool that I have used to help uh, produce the videos that come out of these Zoom meetings that I put on the LI website. I've learned a little bit, and the purpose of this presentation is kind of just to show you what I've learned and really to wet your whistle if you want to use this for something else. And when we're done, I will point you to some YouTube channels that Shotcut, the organization have created, and also some software uh, trainers have created on YouTube. So if you want to learn more, there's a lot of information out there. This presentation is pretty much just intended to say, hello, this is Shotcut. I've used it. This is how I've used it. And I, I think you might find it handy. All right. So I'm going to, well, this is the Shotcut website, shotcut.org. Keep it simple. Go ahead and close this. This is Shotcut. This is it as it is when you first open it. Down here is where your timeline will go. If you've ever done any kind of video editing in the past, you'll understand some of these things. I didn't until I started using it, but we'll explain it as we go. But this is where the timeline for the various tracks will be found. Your elements, your components that you're going to use in your video will go here. This screen will show you how everything blends together that you've got open, that you've got running, so you can see it all, all works together. And here is all important timeline. So if you know if you only have one and a half minutes and you have three minutes of video, you know you've got some editing to do. Uh, everything else will kind of get where we, we'll, we'll demonstrate as we go along. So I'm going to close this blank presentation. Notice I said blank presentation start here. I spell it like it sounds. I helps myself that way. Uh, I'm going to close and I'm going to open up shortcuts. MLT one, actually two. Again, I've, I've saved us a bit of time by go ahead and editing my basic audio and my basic video. So you won't have to see me fiddle with that as we're going along. Um, Shotcut is great in that you can pull from a lot of different things. When I made this video, I'm making it specifically for this recording. I was actually recording myself using a software tool called Audacity. Um, it, and I was also recording myself in Zoom, and I was recording myself with my phone. Um, I found that from my presentations, it is enough for me to just to record in Zoom, provided I've got it set right. And I'm going to show you when you're sharing in Zoom, you go to file share screen. If you have it set for optimized for video clip, and also share sound if you're sharing sound, you're not going to record anybody else's faces. Um, that's a courtesy to your participants, and it also saves you from having to edit them out later on. Um, of course, I'm also using a second screen. I find that helps. I have a second screen with my presentation and then my laptop with all my notes and, and things, kind of the backstage mess. So that's how I set up uh, Zoom for recording. And then, of course, you record, you click record screen to your own computer, and then you have an MP4 file that you can throw in. Um, and then, so that's, that's how I use Zoom. I then have, um, take all the elements that I've created. Here's my shortcut audio that I created. I'm going to use this picture. I'm going to have some background music, um, my cam, one of my camera things, my, this is my cell phone camera. I've also, um, the Zoom, when you record with Zoom, it just calls it Zoom underscore zero. And then, so I didn't bother renaming it, but this is my Zoom file. And uh, what I did was I added a track and then I just dragged my Zoom file down to my video track. I'm going to add it. I'm going to go through the process of adding a new video track just so you can see how it works. So I can right click on my video line track operation, add video track. And it will add a video track above the current one. And then I'm going to add, just to show you, main audio track operation, or add audio track. And that will put an audio track below. For Shotcut, it's important to know that whatever video is on top is the one that will take preeminence. Um, it'll be one that will be shown. So it's consider it like a layer. So I'm going to have my main video or my main image. I'm also going to have what's called an over, what I'm referring to as an overlay. That may not be the right term, but that's what I'm going to use. 
I want to have a video on top of video. All right, so let's go. I'm going to rename this one overlay. You don't have to change the labels. That just helps me. All right, let me get back on my notes I'm slightly off a bit. So I've already got my basic audio and video in. So the one thing, the first thing to do is when you're playing it and you listen through and you kind of mark, have ideas of thing, like things you want to get rid of. Like when I, I'm trying to get better at it, but when I'm talking, I tend to add extra ums and those are just not helpful sometimes. So when I can, I want to get rid of them. And there are a couple ways you can do it. So I'm going to play this. So I will hide those. Oop, wrong. I have my um. Some. Oh, my um is way back here. Sorry. Here's my um. Inserting some ums that I can delete. All right. So I've got two bits of audio that I want to remove. I'm going to do it two ways. The easiest way is if it doesn't affect the video at all, and in this case, because I'm doing using Zoom and my face is really small, you'll never know my lips are, are moving or not moving or out of sync or what have you. What I can do is I can just get rid of it. So you can see that there's a, a segment boundary here. I need to make another segment boundary over here to divide this video into two. So what I can do is I can make sure I'm this track is active. I have the option of Using this little icon, split it playhead. This white line is called playhead. It's called the playhead. So I can split it. So now this video is now two sections. But when, when I delete this, I hit the delete button. I have a problem in that my audio track is still going. I, I use two audio tra tracks because um, I wanted to demonstrate sometimes you want to have a microphone microphone recording yourself because the audio may be better. So that's how I, why I have this. So I want to split the second one down here. So I need to get rid of it, but I've got two lines to make. So what I can do is go back to make my audio line the active one. You see it's red here. I have many times split the wrong thing. And this is where the playhead is. I can just hit the S button. And then I can bring it over here to this side. And I can just hit the S button again. Make sure this is active. Oh, sorry. Make sure it's the active one. Hit the S button. And now I can delete this guy. So now that's gone. But now I have this big old honking blank spot in the space. What I found is you can either move those over together, like one at a time, or there's this nice little button here called ripple delete that will basically close that gap. And it should close the gap for both tracks, which makes it real handy. So I'm going to click it. Hopefully it works. Ah, nice. Sometimes I it sometimes it doesn't work right, but it worked this time. So it closed the gap for all of the for both tracks. So now if I play it, I'm recording on this screen. I'm oh, there was a zip. There's a little you saw that little blurb there. So it's what I can make this bigger. And there's a little bit of a space. I can bring this over. Oops. Now there should be no space. On this. I should have pointed out that this it lets you pan your zoom in and out of your tracks. So that's handy. So then I'll need to bring this one over, but I'll deal with that later. The other way to get rid of this um. Well, let me point out that over on the left, you can see there's a microphone symbol and an eyeball symbol. The microphone symbol or speakerphone symbol on this is an X that shows that this is muted. So even though you can see that there's audio, I'm not playing it. I'm playing this audio. So what I want to do is I want to mute this audio here, this little, the audio in this segment. And now I'm gonna introduce what are called filters. Filters are basically just things you can do with the audio and video. They call them filters. So I'm going to go to filters. And you can see that I've actually already got a filter here. This is for volume control. So I'm actually going to add a filter 
called mute. And I've, and I've just muted this block. So I'm going to hit the play button. So now I'm recording on the screen I have. All right. So now that mute. So now I've muted that. So that is really simple. The, the basics of basic for editing video, how to get rid of bits you don't want and how to get rid of audio you don't want. I can't tell you how many times I've been doing a presentation and the first time I click a button, it just doesn't work. That brings everything to a stop. You know, obviously it's live, so it's happening. But then by the time I put it on YouTube, I've gotten rid of all of those demonstration mode examples. So you, on YouTube in the channel, all that stuff is removed just be, by simply editing and removing video. Another thing you can do is you can have what are just essentially background music. Um, you, you've seen this in some videos you've watched. I'm going to show you how you can do that. I've already added my second audio track. I'm going to call this background. I'll change the label. And I have up in here, I've already added to my elements this, this, this audio right here. And I want to use this as my background music. So I'm going to drag it down to my audio line. And I'm going to bring it over here. It's kind of to where the audio lines up to with the beginning of my video. I'm going to bring my playhead over and we're going to play. And this is going to sound weird because I haven't done anything to the volume for the background, but I just want to show it to you. All right. All right, we'll stop that right there. So you can see that I've added volume. I've added the background, but it's kind of loud. So again, I'm going to add a filter to my background music. It's called gain. My 13 year old son taught me this, by the way. And you can slide, slide, you can slide it higher up to make it louder or bring it down. This is background music. I want it just to be kind of in the back. I don't want it to be overwhelming what I'm speaking. Or what I'm saying. So you can play it. All right. And you can adjust it as you now go. I'm recording on this screen. I have sensitive email address that needs to be hidden. And All right. So I have now added extra audio and I'm calling it just my background music. So that's simply adding audio track. Um, now, one of the fun things about this is it's intended to be a video editing tool. So I'm going to show you how you can add uh, multiple video clips. All right, let me bring up. So I have back in my playlist, I have uh, this here I'm calling camera two. The one I recorded, it, I had myself looking at Zoom. And then I also had my camera, my phone off to the side. And I was recording that. and um, Sometimes you've seen, watch video where they kind of change the camera view going on to kind of maintain interest, kind of easy on the eyes and that sort of a thing. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can do that in Shotcut. So I'm going to drag this video clip over. I'm going to put it right about here. Now, you can see that there's audio. I'm going to turn my background music off so we don't hear that. And this is me, so this is myself talking. This is, you're gonna see my lips. And if this is out of sync, that's gonna kind of look kind of weird, but it's helpful in that the video, you can kind of see the audio here. So while it's slightly different, it won't be that far off. So I'm gonna just gonna drag kind of, what I'm doing is I'm eyeballing where the audio starts for my track, for my main audio and where the audio starts for my video. Excuse me. And I'm going to turn this audio off. I don't want to hear it. But then I'm just going to watch my lips. On this screen, I have ah, sensitive email address. Right. That was good enough for this demonstration. If I wanted to get it exactly right, I would zoom in all the way in and make sure it's just lined right up. But that is good. So, but so that's how you can get us. You can on the same video 
you can have on the same image, you can switch cameras back and forth just by using the different track. And this takes advantage of um, Shotcut's assumption that the highest track is what you want to show. But this is kind of a hard break on this, that, that, that all of a sudden there it is. So we're going to apply another filter to the video. So I'm going to go to this segment, click on filters, and Zoom has what's called fade. Well, it's, you can see that Zoom divides, kind of helps you out by dividing the filters. Here's all your favorites, most commonly used. And there's also subdivided based on filter or based on video, based on audio. I have only ever used three, maybe four filters. And there are a lot of them. So you can really go to town on this. Um, here's video. I, I, yes, I've only used some. I have not used, I've only used a few. Uh, I'm going to show fade in video and I'm going to add fade out video. Fade. I, I can type fade out video. So make sure, oh, yeah, make sure I've had fade in video, or fade out, fade out video. Sometimes I messed up and put in fade in audio. So now I'm going to hit the play button. On this screen, that's not as harsh as the before, but it's still kind of harsh. You can see that um, there's those ums I add, right? Shotcut has adjust opacity, opacity instead of fade with black. So I'm going to check that with both of them. On this screen, I have sensitive email address that needs to be hidden. And I also have, I'll advance over here so you can see what that looks like fading out. Email address and I will hide those pictures. Okay, so that is adding the fade in, fade out filters to video, also adding a separate video track. The thing that I found most helpful especially early on before I, um, sometimes when you're making a video, there are things that you just don't want to put on YouTube. Like in this video, I'm going to bring this down so you can see. I've, I kind of made a funny one here. This is sensitive under, at email address, and this is just a picture. Now let's pretend that I was making, doing the demonstration live and I, and I let slip an email address that I don't want to have on YouTube. Or I, I used a picture then we, uh, for the live demonstration and we realized we probably shouldn't have shown this individual. There's a way you can blur these. And that's what I'm going to show next. So again, I need to go to my segment. And there are three um, filters that you have to use in a group to get um, to get blurring to work right. And this always kind of takes me a while to figure out. So I'm going to add them. And they have to go in order. There's, there is simple, sh simple shape. Then there is box. Nope, how about if I type the word box correctly? Blur box. Then there's apply. And these have to go go together. And just while we're here, the check box means it's active. So if I were to uncheck fade out video, that fade, while it would still rep be represented here, it would not be used. So, excuse me, now I'm going to, to go about blurring the email address. And I always have trouble getting this exactly right, but these are the shapes, these are the, the controls. I'm going to make it very big so I can find it. It should be in the middle of the screen. Come on. Uh, go back to box. Maybe I make the width. Okay, that's. All right, you can see I've now I blurred the whole screen, which is very secure, but also very useless. So I'm going to go back to simple shape, and I'm going to make this smaller. So now you can see. Now I did that so I can find where the blur is. 
and I'm making it height controls up and down, width controls left and, and how wide it is. And horizontal is left and right, vertical is up and down. All right, so now the address is hidden, but there's more, there's things I don't want, I don't need to hide. So I'm gonna go worry, work about uh, making it smaller still. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Make where it is oh, get back here. It's always kind of a fine tuny thing. That's why it's always best to not record it in the first place. And I can make it uh, height. All right, that's probably good enough. So that's one thing blurred. So if I were to play this. Uh, you get the play button, hide those pictures. And that you can see that now it's blurred. If I were getting this exactly right for like a real presentation, I would have blurred it out over here in this segment, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so that is the email address is now hidden. But what about this face? This guy in the green, he really should be hidden. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all three of these. I'm going to, uh, I can copy, copy the, I'm going to copy the filters. I'm going to go down below, get back here, get back here, paste the filters. I'm going to du essentially duplicate them. So I don't need the, this one that's redundant, but now you can see that I've got duplicate, uh, simple shape box supply simple shape box apply, but I want to move this second set, right? Essentially, I'm blurring the same thing. So I'm going to move it over to where the camera is. Actually, it needs to be by messing with horizontal and vertical first. So horizontal, oop, wrong direction. He's further over here. And then vertical further, oop, further down. All right, so now I've, I've got the box kind of where I need it to be. I gotta make the width sm oops, smaller. Wrong, yeah, right direction. And then I'm gonna make it wider, taller. All right, and then I'm gonna scoot it over. Oh, horizontal, move it over a little bit. Oops, wrong direction. And I'm gonna bring in down, oop, down, oop, wrong direction. Sorry about that. There. So now I have, now I actually have two spots blurred on this, on this image. And if I really wanted to get, let's say I just did the zoom recording wrong and I wanted to record, blur the images that I captured, I would just then make another set of those three and then bring them over here, that same method and hide all three of those. But I don't need to do that for this presentation. So that is the basics of how you blur out things. And again, by far and away, the, the best way to avoid having sensitive information that needs to be blurred is to not copy, not have sensitive information on the screen, but sometimes it happens. So uh, like sometimes you get a really good picture and it's like, if I just, you can't crop it out because it's in the middle, but if I just blur that bit, then we're fine those sorts of things. So that is blurring. Okay, how am I specifying? That's a good question. The, um, the filter applies for the duration of the segment. So that filter will apply for this entire segment. It'll run through to the end. Now, it, what I really should have done is if this were for real video, before I began chopping it up, I would have blurred those images so that the, the, the filter would have applied across the whole segment. One of the nice things about Shotcut is if, if I were to have done that before, before I started adding these different segments, if I would have blurred, let's say from this point forward, because this is where it starts, if I would have blurred this box right here and blurred that face right here, and this just been one continuous segment, it would have been blurred the entire time. And then when I made this chop, this section would have retained those filters. And then this section would have retained those filters. And that'd have been nice and handy, uh, but I didn't do it that way. 
Um, so if I really wanted to be careful, I would have had to um, make sure I went in and made a segment right here and blur it and come over here. Oops. And put a line, put a segment right here and then and blurred it there. But I don't need to do that. All right. So that is what I've done for blurring. Um, so on occasion, so there was a presentation I did involving my phone. And I realized after the fact that I probably shouldn't have had phone numbers in the presentation. So I, I blurred them. So, you know, things happen. Uh, so that is blurring. And so the, um, again, with that filter, that gain setting we just put on the background music, that now applies to the whole thing. So if I need to, ever needed to chop this up for whatever reason, the volume would be, remain common the whole way through. So that's quite handy. Something I want to show you that's kind of fun. I, I learned, I, I made a crash plan. If, if you know, I, I have made crash plan videos as advertisements for the crash plan system. And I made one that I haven't shown. I was just kind of fiddling. With, it was more of me of learning how to use Shotcut to do what's called, you know, picture in picture. So you have a, a, a picture that kind of occurs on part of it. You might be familiar with, with a television for you watching a, a sporting event. And then all of a sudden you want to keep an eye on the other one. You know, that's a use for that. A, a, a good use for that in our kind of environment would be if you're you know, recording yourself talking, but you want to have a slide for a, a pre for some sort of a slide showing up above your shoulder. That's an example of picture in picture. So I'm going to show you how we do that. I'm going to go back to my playlist and I'm going to use this image right here. I'm just going to drag that down to right about here. And now if I were to, and now, now remember, Shotcut assumes the highest track has priority. So I'm going to hit play now. So now I'm recording. And you can see my LI computing unit sign is taken over. So you can't see the screen I wanted to show. That is obviously a problem. It's obviously not what I intended. So I'm going to move this thing out of the way. This is a picture. One of the nice things about pictures is you can make them last as long or as short, their duration as long or as short as you want by doing this. You can see I'm just sliding left and right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want that picture to show up here. I want it to be right about here. I'll get back here. I want it to start ah, here and end right about there. Get back here. That's fine. So now if I hit play. Right. So now I'm recording. I still have my problem, my sign. Well, that is handled through a filter. So I make sure I'm, this is my active segment. I'm at the plus button. And they have a filter called size, size, position, and rotate. I'm going to apply that. And size, position, and rotate gives you this, what you see is what you get style control. So I can now drag this corner. And it makes the box this big. I can grab the little dot in the middle. I can move it wherever I want. If I wanted to really make people crazy or wonder, I can turn it upside down. I don't want to do that. I want it to be right up. And you can see, you can, of course, also deal with the numbers, but I prefer the what you see is what you get control. So now, if I hit come over here and hit play, recording on this screen. OK. But again, we have the problem of that being kind of harsh, the transition. So again, I can add my, uh, my filters, fade in video. I'm going to do that opaque things. I like it. And then I'm going to add fade out video. I'm going to do the opaque thing because I like it. It's, you know, it's purely a preference. So now if I hit play. Recording on this screen. I you can see, so now I've got the picture set to go right there. 
So that's how picture in picture works. In my shotcut, in my sorry, in my crash plan video, I actually had several picture in picture things it, it, appearing at different times. So I had one one right here, for example. Then I had a space, and I had one right here, and then one right here, and then I each one had their own filter, so they could appear on the main screen wherever I wanted them. So I thought that was kind of fun. So something else you have seen people do in videos is add text. We can do that with a filter, uh, but text is kind of complicated. And I found a guy on YouTube who showed you how, showed me how to do it, but it's it, there may be a better way, but I haven't found it yet. So again, because of the way video stack, I have to have another track, and I'm going to make insert a new insert track option add video track. And I'm going to give this one a label. I'm going to call it text. Excuse me. Now, what I'm going to do is I want the text to appear right. I want the text to appear right here. The way I have found to do it is you actually make a copy of the video. You make a segment out of the video that you want the text to appear in. Control C, copy, make this the active track, and I should be able to paste it right here. Uh, should be able to paste, edit, paste, paste. Uh, see, this is where it gets tricky. Do you see what happened? It's it added the video, but it brought it, but it split these, and that's just it strikes me as being a bug. But that's okay. What I can do is I can bring this over here out of the way, highlight this, use the ripple delete. Come on. Actually, maybe, maybe I need to be in here. Why is this not doing it? And that brought it all back together. And I'm going to play it just to make sure it's right. So now I'm recording. All right, and I'm going to do something. I'm going to join these because I didn't want that segment there. I'm gonna, um, there's an option under more called merge with next clip. Sometimes you make a segment accidentally. Uh, actually, I didn't want to do that. Edit undo. Actually, I want this to be. Hmm. Somehow, something things happen. Somehow, my this track got lined up in the wrong spot. So I'm going to bring that back over. All right. OK. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. OK. So now I'm going to bring this video clip back over. And I want it to be right in line with the one below. And I want to turn the audio, the vid, the audio off because I don't want to hear it. That would bring my um back. So now I'm going to take this segment, add a filter called text. I'm just going to use text simple. Text rich allows you to do animation. I don't want to do that right now. And there are some codes for if you want to have time codes, that sort of thing. Basically, this just tells you where the text is. And again, it gets you that same what you see is what you get. I'm going to make this. Um, uh, presented by, by, and if I scroll down, you have the option for color. We have white. I want to make it red. And then I have this. What you see is what you get. I'm gonna actually. I can center it, and I'm gonna bring this down. And I'm going to bring it up here. All right. And I also want, I'm going to want this to fade in, fade out. Uh, this, this video clip. Fade. Fade in, fade out. Fade video, fade out. Out video. Oops, fade out video. And I want the op opaque thing. All right, so now when I hit play, you should see 
recording. Ah, you see, it overwrote my my picture. So I'm actually going to bring this up here because you can drag it around and bring this down here and bring this here and stretch out my video, my picture. So now I'm recording. I actually don't know why the picture didn't show up. Right. So now I'm recording on this screen. <laughs> I have sensitive email address that needs to be hidden. And I also have pictures that I want to hide. Oh, I, I think maybe because of that segment got cut. I don't know. But that's in general how that's supposed to work. I would spend a lot of time trying to troubleshoot it, but I don't have time to figure out why it was fading out again, coming back. But I think it's because of the way I accidentally split the segment. All right. So that is how you can do picture in picture and how you can add text. And again, you can add text all over the place if you want. Um, another thing that you can do for text you've often may have often seen are just what are called title cards and when you I, I have i typically learn by doing and i typically do by just starting sometimes it's helpful to think things through if you ever watch the, the makings of videos you often see that the directors start with a storyboard kind of charting out their ideas i'd recommend that if you're making a video you start out with a storyboard or some ideas of how you wanting it to go. Um, so I, I kind of thought through this a little bit and realized at the beginning, I wanted to have a, an intro card right here. That's why I've left space. If I didn't leave space for an intro card right here, I'd have to move all these segments over and I'd run the risk of messing up my timing. So I've led the, left the space here. So I'm gonna go to playlist. There's a, an element just called color. I'm going to delete this and show you how I've created it. Come on. Actually, edit undo. Hit the remove button here. Always remove the right thing. So I'm going to go to file, open other. Oh, that's not the one. Rats. File. Where's it go? Well, that was what open. Open other, that was where it's supposed to be. Oh, here it is, I'm sorry, color. And I'm gonna make my color be black just because I want it to be black. And hit the okay button, hit okay. And that creates something up here, this is black screen. And I wanna add that to my playlist by just taking it and dragging it over. And you can see that's, that's my black element and now Shotcut treats it like a, a, a treats it like a simple picture. So I'm going to drag it right here, and I can size it up. I want it to line up with my audio. I get back here, or I may want to move my audio later. I don't know. So now I have a simple screen, a simple black element, and now I'm going to go to add a just a, te a text filter. And this is where I want to add my um, rich text just to show you what it would look like. And you have options, you have preset. These are the things scrolling up, scrolling down. So I'm gonna use scroll up, kind of like the Star Wars effect. And then I'll come over here. I should start be able to typing. Ah, I need to change the Hmm, I should, should I come on. Uh, this is my text. So if I hit the play button, uh, I had to, I needed to get so where I could see the screen. So I'm gonna, you can see that the, the, I started typing before I changed the font. So this is my example video using shortcut 
20.11.28, I think is the version. So now if I come over here and play, and I can go down here, and I'm gonna turn on my background music. We haven't had that in a while. Play. All right. And if I if I go to just highlight the background music, I can bring over and play. You'll see what it looks like without the control elements. And you can use any one of those uh, presets, or you can make your own. All right. I am nearly done with what I wanted to present. Another thing is closing credits. Closing credits will look just like the intro card that I just created. I'm going to go to playlist and I'm going to add it over here to my um, the backside of my main image line. Again, I just take that text, that text square and bring it right here and I can size it up as I want it. And so now I have my text, my filter. I'm going to have my box, my filter. I'm going to add my text. And it's just going to be rich text. I know I didn't mean rich text. I meant simple text. Sorry. Text. Simple. And I'm just going to take out the time code. And I'm going to use, give, I'm going to add the credits for the video. And I'm going to, I've already got that in a Google Doc over here. So I'm going to control C. And this is the credits for the music. If I had borrowed anybody else's, if I, um, this is where you would put, if you use a recording studio or if you use somebody else's footage, you can put all that stuff here. If there's extra information you can put here, there's a typical, you know, end credit thing. Um, so, yeah. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go do some last minute cleanup. I remember we had this little bit of space right here. I don't want to sort out by bringing it over. Uh, come on. You can get it in a little bigger. Unfortunately, there's no mouse left mouse. There's no arrows that let you um, just inch it over. At least there is. I haven't found it. Oh. Come on. I wonder if I can do this more. I, I can't merge with next clip because there's space. Rats. So I just gotta, gotta keep moving it. Like zoom in bigger so I can have actual control. I can actually there we are. There we are. And now I can bring this one over. All right. So now if I zoom out. I can, I can also use a slider, right? Less jarring on your eyes if I use a slider. All right, bring it in a little bit. And if I play, I bring it over here, play. I had those pictures. And that's the end of my recording. That's all I want to do. All right, so the last thing to do is to chop off the video, or the audio at the end. I'm just going to bring my trailhead right here. I Actually, what I want to do, because if you look at it, you see that the audio is trailing off. I want my I want my audio to end right there because that seems like a good place to bring closure. So I'm going to bring my background music, and then I'm going to hit S. And I'm going to delete this, and then I uh, bring this out. I hit play. My recording. That's all I want to do. All right, and then when I'm all done, let's say I'm all done, and I hit export, export file, save it where I want to save it, and the job listing of jobs being done will be over here, and it's going to do its work. It's a short video, so it should go pretty quick, and then you can play it in Windows Media Player. You can upload it to YouTube. You can upload it anywhere. I realized that I didn't show how to use green screen in this video. I, I had it on my list of things to do, but I just forgot about it. I'm going to show that to you now. 
I am going to go, but I'm going to go quick. Again, we have the idea of playlist. I've added my green screen recording here. You see I've recorded in the back and I'm putting put my slider right there. And if I click on filters, you can see that I've already applied what's called chroma, simp chroma key simple. That basically says I have a green screen and you can slide adjust what it looks like here using the distance slide. I've used size, position, and rotation. You've seen that before to kind of put my head at the bottom box. Otherwise, it would overwhelm the whole thing. And then fade in, fade out using opaque as I like as I have done in the past. Play button. And that's the end of my recording. That's all I want to do. And so this could be a situation where um, if you want to have a green screen to where you know, you're recording like in Zoom the whole presentation without your camera being shown, but then you're using your own, like a camera, like your phone camera on a tripod behind your laptop. So you get the screen, green screen behind you as you're presenting um, or a camera off to the side, what have you, or you do the presentation like a PowerPoint presentation and then you're, um, and then you're recording yourself talking through the presentation on a PowerPoint. Anyway, those are just some options that, that you can use. Um, just wanted to demonstrate that this is how it would work. And this is using Chroma Key Simple. Um, yeah, so there you are.